Hi, I'm Caleb and in this video I am going to show you how to get up and running with a Wagtail website that's available on the internet with one single click. So what we're going to do uh, just behind me here is if you go to github.com slash wagtail, you can scroll on down and go to wagtail gitpod. And what's nice about this is you're not only going to get up and running with Wagtail in the cloud pretty much instantly, you're also going to have an editor where you can access modern Python. So no longer do you need to have VS Code or Atom or Sublime on your computer. You don't need to deal with different versions of Python because this will just give you the latest version of Python, which is really, really nice. Basically, all the stuff that's on your computer that makes a Django and Wagtail website actually work, you don't need. You can do it all right through the browser, which is really, really cool. And as you can tell, I get really excited about this. So we just go to github.com slash wagtail slash wagtail dash gitpod. And this is the one click button. So we're just going to click this button here and that's going to open up in here. Now for me, it's already asked me to log in. For you, it's going to say you're going to have to log in with GitHub. You're going to have to authenticate yourself with GitHub. Uh, but you don't need to give access to any of your repositories or anything like that. You just say, yeah, lo basically log in with GitHub. Uh, so that I think is the one small price to pay here. And you just didn't see that on my screen. Now down here, you actually see that this is pretty much doing pip install dash r requirements.txt. It's installing all of the requirements that we need for a Wagtail and a Django website to get up and running. In just a couple of moments, eventually this is going to start working with uh, migrations. And so this is going to start, here it is, it's going to start applying all of, all of the migrations and really forming our database. And then once this is done, it's going to pop up a nice little preview just off to the side here. Uh, we should see that in just a moment. Just a moment, and there it is. Nice little preview where we can actually access our website. So let's go ahead and get started by doing just some minor changes. Let's make a change to a database and let's make a change to this page itself. So what we can do here is we can go into our admin interface or we can click up here and this opens up a brand new tab for us with this crazy URL. But while this workspace is up and running and workspaces won't last forever, I think they last for about 30 minutes or so, but don't quote me on that. Uh, but once you have access to this URL, you can share it with your friends, your family, other Wagtail developers, and they can see what you're working on, which I think is just really cool because now you don't need a server. You don't need a, you don't need to like screen share with Slack or zoom or anything like that. You can literally just give people this URL. So let's go ahead and log into our admin interface and I'm going to zoom in here. Now to log into our admin interface, we need a login and we have one. The username is admin and the password is change me. So let's go in here and type admin change me. And boom, we're inside of Wagtail up and running in like a minute, maybe two minutes, somewhere around there. It's pretty wild in my opinion. Uh, so we also have this, we can operate directly in here as well. It didn't ask me to log in because I already logged in through this URL. And so in git pod here, we have all of our files. This is just base wagtail. We've got a home app and a search app and our site is just called my site. We have basically all sorts of text stuff we can do in here. We've got a text editor. This is using Visual Studio Code in the cloud. So you don't need to have it on your computer. Over here is basically a fake browser. So you can do all of your preview stuff over there uh, or you can open it up in a new tab. I like it. I like having it in a new tab. It just gives me a little more space to work with. Uh, and then down here, we actually have a full blown terminal. And if I type Python dash V, Python dash V, I am using Python 3.8.2. Now that's not on my computer. That's in this environment, which is really, really cool. I can also do pip dash v. We can see what version of pip we're using. I can tell you right now on my computer, I'm not using that version of pip. Probably should be, but currently I'm not. We can also do pip show wagtail. What version of wagtail are we running? 2.9. And that just comes from version 2.9. We can also do pip show Django or any other package. And this one is going to show us 3.0.6. 
So that's pretty cool. Now, what we want to do is rerun the server. So I'm going to first clear that. Python manage.py run server 0.0.0.0. .0, .0, .0 on port 8080. Now by default, we're using port 8080 here, and you can see your open ports in this little tab here. You can see 8080 is currently, uh, it's reserved, but it's actually not being used. So let's go ahead and just hit enter here, and we're gonna see that our ports, it's gonna change for us, it changes. And so we can open a preview or we can open the browser. Let's open the preview here. It's the exact same thing, nothing changed. If you want to, however, you don't need to use port 8080. Let's cancel this, hit up, and let's use port 8000, which is also a common port. And we can see in our open ports here, this will, there we go, it populates. We can open the preview, let's open this preview. We can also open this in the browser. This is going to give us a very, very similar URL, but we can see up here it says 8000 versus 8080. And so if you wanted to use different ports, totally you could. It doesn't really matter. But if you are using this and you usually use a different port, uh, just, you know, habit is going to tell you to go to port 8000 or 8080 or 3000 or 5000, whatever port you want to use. Just make sure that uh, you might need to make this public uh, and then you can open it in the browser or open a preview and that's going to change that URL just slightly for you. So it's going to show you the right page. Now let's go back into our admin interface here. And because I'm using a different port, it's going to ask me to sign in again. And let's make a change to our home page. So this is a default Wagtail page. It just has a title, it's got some promote stuff, and it's got some settings. We can add another field in here. So let's go into the home app and go into models.py. And let's say, mm, that's kind of squishy, isn't it? I'll zoom in, hopefully that stays okay. Let's say we wanted to add a new field in here called banner title. So it's not going to be the title of the page, it's going to be a specific banner title. We can do that by typing banner underscore title is equal to models dot char field max length is equal to 50 and the default is going to be hello world. And that's it. And at this point in time, because we saved the page, this is going to try to run for us. Uh, but because it's a Wagtail page, we also need to use content panels. So let's add a content panel. And in here, content panels is equal to page.content panels. So that's just inheriting all of our default content panels. And then we give it an extra list of all the panels we want. So we're going to use a field panel and we're going to give it a string called banner title. And that just links up here. Now you can actually see in VS Code in the cloud that when I hover over this, undefined variable. Field panel isn't found. That's because it's not actually on this page yet. What we can do is import it though. From wagtail dot admin dot edit handlers import field panel. Just like that, hit save. That little squiggly underline went away, so everything's okay. And if we refresh this page, we're actually going to see that it doesn't work for us. And this is very common. If you've ever developed a website, uh, a Wagtail website or a Django website on your local computer instead of in the cloud, you'll see the exact same error. This basically just says that this hasn't been mapped to our database yet. So what we can do here is if we clear this in our terminal, again, I'm using python-v, python 3.8.2. So what I can do is type python manage.py make migrations. And what this is going to do is say, hey, there's some new stuff in here. Basically, map it to a Python file. And then I can say python manage.py migrate. And this is actually gonna take that database file, this db.sqlite3 in here, and it's going to modify it for us. It's going to change that database table and add a column called banner title. So now when we rerun our server, so I just hit up a few times here, rerun our server. Uh, I'm still on port 8000. Uh, probably would be better to stick with the original port of 8080. Uh, let's go ahead and refresh this page. And here we go, this is working. Okay, that's cool, 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 cool. Let's go and edit our home page. And now we can see we have banner title, hello world. Now that's up and running. We made database changes. This is working for us. And when we view the live page, let's go up to the tab here. It's a bigger version anyways. We have not changed this template yet. Let's go ahead and change this template to make sure that it actually does work. 
So we can go into our home app here, templates, and the home page. And let's just get rid of this home page and the comment that says delete it. And let's put like an H1 or something in here. That's just going to be a test title. And underneath it, we're going to put page.banner underscore title. And this is just Django templating. So we're getting that banner title from our models in here. And I just hard coded an H1 in there just so we know that it actually works. And so we know that this is going to be dynamic. So when I go back here, hit refresh, we've got our test title and hello world. This is the nice part. Hello world is coming from here. So we could say, let's overwrite this with Caleb has had too much coffee today with a little funny emoji face in there. Let's publish that page publish. And let's go refresh the larger version of this page. It says Caleb has had too much coffee today, which is true, but I'm not apologetic for it. Now there's a lot more you can do with Wagtail Gitpod. So you have this preview, you can close that preview if you wanted to. You can do all sorts of Git stuff in here. Uh, and you can also, also, what I really like is when you open up like models.py, you can click this little icon over here, the one called outline, and it just helps you skip to different places. So now in the span of about 10 minutes, we have a brand new Wagtail site up and running. We have it up and running in the cloud. So we've got a text editor and we've got an entire Python virtual environment in there. We have access to Python on the command line and all sorts of stuff in there. We have uh, access to the admin. So we could do slash admin, go back in here. We have access to the entire Wagtail admin. And then we added a custom field called banner title to our homepage. And we added that into Wagtail so that Wagtail knows to expose that field so we can actually edit it. And we updated our template, not that page. We updated this template file. So we did all of that in 10 ish minutes. Not bad. I would challenge someone to try to uh, install a brand new operating system on their computer, install VS code, install Python, get a virtual environment up and running, uh, get Wagtail and Django up and running, make a Django uh, model change, and then also change the template to do all of that in about 10 minutes. It's going to be really, really hard. Uh, now, the nice thing that I really like about this, again, is it's in the cloud. So you can do all of your editing in here. And if you wanted to share a problem uh, that you had that wasn't quite working for some reason, or you wanted to share this website with someone, you could just give them that link and give them the admin login and it'll just work for them. So now you don't need to use Zoom or Slack video messages or anything like that. You don't need to share your screen. You can literally just share the entire project with someone else. I think that's really, really powerful. Once again, I've been your host, Caleb Tallin. Thank you for joining me on this video. And I hope uh, you get to play around with Gitpod and have some fun with it. Feel free to experiment and break things. Literally, the worst case scenario is you shut down the workspace and you start up a brand new one.